Boiler down. Let's beat Purdue. This is a huge home game for the Badgers. Can they pull it off? Who are some of the keys? Uh, who are some of the key players to this game? Uh, let's talk about it on Wisconsin. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every day. I really do appreciate everybody tuning in. Huge, enormous game tomorrow. I just kind of want to talk about it a little bit. Uh, keys to the game, some of my key players to the game, how I think the Badgers might defend Zach Eady and the rest of that Boilermakers, that really, really talented Boilermakers team. First, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com today. FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. All right, um, let's get into it. This is an enormous game, right? Uh, this is kind of going to put whoever wins this game in the driver's seat for that Big Ten regular season title. It's a huge, huge, huge game coming off that Nebraska loss. I kind of want to start there. Um, I think that there's a scenario where that Nebraska loss positions Wisconsin in a better mindset for this game. This became, this game almost becomes such a must win now because you're not. I don't think you're going to go back on the road and beat Purdue. And you kind of lost your cushion now with that Nebraska game. This this team could come out with their hair on fire because they know how important this game is, right? Um, games at home, it's probably Purdue's toughest road game of the year. And they've lost a couple on the road, right? They, they're they really good. Like, Purdue's really freaking good. I mean, trains are overrated, boiler down, all that stuff. But they're really good. But they have dropped a couple on the road. Dropped one to Nebraska on the road, just like Wisconsin did. Dropped one to Northwestern. Um there's a the Badgers have a chance here. Now I put it on the backboard here. You got to bring the noise. That that crowd has to be into it. I know at times there's a reputation that that you know the, the Cole Center crowd doesn't quite get quite as into it as, as other venues. They got to bring the noise. That team has to be ready to play right away. They have to start fast. Um, but here's the thing with Purdue. It's you you have a head. I, their their surrounding pieces to me are so underrated. They. Everyone looks at the team and says, Zach Eady, Zach Eady. Of course, they're really good. Zach Eady, you got to stop Zach Eady. Uh, Braden Smith is awesome. Like, he's so good. Braden Smith is so good. He's shooting uh, 43% from three, 12 points per game, uh, seven assists, seven and a half assists, five, 5.4 rebounds. Like, he is such a good floor general for them. Um, again, seven and a half assists a game. He controls it. He's really good, sneaky good in transition. He shoots the ball really, really well. Plays off at Eady really, really well. They do some action with him in the pick and roll. Um, he's really tough. Like, that's a really good guard. Brain Smith might be the second best player in this game. And then you go down the list. They have shooters. They have shooters that surround Edie, which makes it so, so difficult. Because if, in reality, if it was just Zach Edie and a bunch of mediocre players around him, you could swarm the post. Um, I know that's how uh, Nebraska kind of beat them. But you can't because they hit shots around him, right? And Edie... For and this is a credit to him. Uh, he has a really high usage rate. He doesn't have a high turnover rate, so he's able to find open players. Lance Jones, the fifth-year senior that they have in the backcourt, he's really unique. He gives them some microwave ability scoring. Um, so they have the ability to to shoot all around Edie. Um, they take a lot of shots. They're second in the country, I believe, in three-point made percentage. And by the way, Wisconsin doesn't defend the three-point shot very well. So there's a lot here besides Edie. Cannonell says you guys are overrating Smith so hard. He's not that good. I disagree. Um, and Cannon's a good dude. Like Cannon is, uh, obviously an awesome dude. Great friend of the show. He's really good. In my opinion, Braden Smith is really good. The dude's averaging 12, seven and a half and five and a half. How many guards in the country do that? I think, I think if he was on a lot of other teams, for some reason, I, it's almost like Zach Eady overshadows what he does. I think he's really good. I think he might be the second best player in this team, but again, you also have Lance Jones, a fifth year senior who brings just some microwave scoring ability to their game. He'll pull up in transition. You'll get in the paint. A uh, really good defensive player, Lance Jones. Uh, they got Fletcher Lawyer, who's another guy who can shoot, coming off three three-pointers made against Northwestern. So they have a lot of pieces around them. That's my bigger point, is it's not just Edie, right? It's Edie plus shooters around them, plus guys who play really good defense. So it is a difficult team to play. They are, and you know, if you look at Ken Palm, the number one offense in the country, number 17 defensively in the country, right? So you're playing a team that is really good defensively. They obviously have an anchor. Their perimeter players get after it. And a team offensively that's the number one rated Ken Palm offense in the country. So I want to talk about my keys to the game, some of my key players, how I would defend Zach Eady. But first, I want to get your comments. This is from Dark Ray. Um, that letdown last game kind of ruined the hype for this game, but hopefully we can get back on track with the win. 
I agree. Losing that Nebraska game kind of took some of the wind out of the sails coming into this one, but it also could get this team in, in more of a a must have mindset. Right? If you if you won that Nebraska game, maybe you come into this one playing feeling a little too good. Maybe maybe you're playing with house money a little bit. Uh, you need this one. If, if you want to reach that goal of winning the Big Ten title, the Big Ten regular season title, you need this game. So I kind of hope that Nebraska game lit that fire under them. And they're going to be playing at home. There's no reason not to come out playing with incredible energy. Uh, Adam Otto says Nebraska was tough to watch. Uh, Bob Milborn said after Nebraska debacle, this game is a must. I agree. This game is not a must in the sense of it makes or breaks the season. And But this game is a must if you still think you're going to win the Big Ten regular season title. Uh, I believe that. Uh, Hayden Johnson says we have to win or go undefeated the rest of the way. I don't think so. I think Purdue's probably got another loss or two in it. I think people underrate how easy it is to lose on the road in the Big Ten. I don't know if you have to go undefeated the rest of the way. I think I think you could lose another game and still win the Big Ten regular season title, which goes for Purdue as well, by the way. Um, Jake and Bartlett says, let's go Badgers. I'm sad about Nebraska still. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Badger and Boardmouth, I think Wisconsin wins by six to eight. Let's go. Um, Brewers and Badgers says we're winning. Um, Dark Ray says Braden Smith might be the best point guard in the conference. Yeah, uh, Brewers, Badgers said I'd rather have Boo Booey. Uh, I wouldn't, I would rather have Braden Smith over Boo. Well, Boo, Boo Booey is, is really good. Um, I like Braden Smith's floor game better. Mitch Ames, Cole Center is always better when the students show. Yep, I agree. Um, all right, let's. Let's let's go into this now a little bit more. Some keys to the game and, and key, what I think is important here. Uh, let's start with the fact that neither of these teams should be intimidated. Purdue has played the toughest, toughest schedule in the country per Ken Baum. They're not going to be intimidated coming into the Kohl Center. They're not going to be intimidated by Wisconsin. But Wisconsin has played the third toughest schedule in the country per Ken Baum, right? So both these teams have been battle tested. Both of these teams have earned their rankings, right? Um, so it's going to be a, a test in that sense of two teams who have been hardened by the schedule, which I, I can't wait to see. How do you guard Edie? Right. Let's start there with my three my three key players for the Badgers of this game. And you need everybody, right? I could have said who who are the key players of this game? It's everybody in the Badgers rotation because you're going to need all hands on deck for this one. I think this is probably the best team in the country. You're going to need all hands on deck. However, who are it's like the key key guys? You got to start with Crow. Right. This has to be the best game of Stephen Crow's career, coming off a one point performance. Um, against Nebraska, had 13 rebounds in that game. But you, you, this isn't a game where he has to be better than Edie, but this is a game, listen to me here, where he can't be dominated by Edie. He has to counterpunch. He has to hang in there. He has to survive, right? Play Eye of the Tiger in the background. Like, this is a game where you have to survive, which means you cannot get in crazy foul trouble. This, you're going to pick up a couple, no matter what, playing Edie. Don't pick up a cheap one. You cannot get a cheap foul or two in this game. Because the front court depth isn't there to deal with Zach Eady. And Crowell can at least kind of deal with him in a sense. He's a veteran player. He has enough size and wingspan, at least compared to all the other type of players that are going to guard Eady. Eady's going to get his. Can Crowell counterpunch? Can Crowell get a couple buckets? Can Crowell make Eady work a little defensively, right? He is the linchpin of this game because he has to stay involved and he has to survive. That's the key word for Stephen Crowell in this game. Survive. Survive and continue battling. That's it. You just have to stay out there. You have to stay out there and make life out within reasonable consideration as difficult for Edie as you can. Make him work, right? Make him shoot over outstretched hands. And yes, he's going to make a ton of those. But if you get in foul trouble, he's going to make a ton more of them. Nolan Winter's not physically ready for this. He's just not. It's not his fault either. And then who else? Are you going to Gilmore? I mean, understand what... The importance of Crowell in this game. If he gets two fouls early, if he gets um, one, I mean, you just can't pick up silly ones. So he's the number one beyond all measure key to this game for me. He has to play the best game of his career. And again, he doesn't have to play outplay Edie. I don't think that's fair. But he needs to at least make him work and he needs to survive. Number two player uh, for me that's a key in this game is Hepburn. Hepburn for the last five games, six points or less. All right, that's not, that's not going to be enough in this game. I think the key to this game for me, outside of Crowell being able to stay in the game and survive, is Hepburn has to, he has to probably outplay Braden Smith, right? He has to win that matchup because we're going to lose the Edie matchup, barring something crazy, and that's fine. We can lose that matchup, but then I think Hepburn has to win the point guard matchup. I think he has to outplay Braden Smith, and that's not an easy task. Um, I know some people, 
are, are maybe not as high in Braden Smith as I am. I know Cannonell isn't. That's totally fine. I think he's a really good floor general. And I think the numbers kind of back it up. He shoots 43% from three. He gets five and a half rebounds a game, seven assists. And yes, to Badger and Bormont's point, and he put it up here, a lot of those assists is because no one can stop Edie. A lot of them are. A lot of them aren't, though, too, right? He's in transition. He is he's off the pick and roll. He'll just keep it, get down in the paint, and kick it into the corner for one of their shooters. He does a lot for that team. Um, he's also pretty good defensively. Not great, but I, Hepburn needs to win that battle. And I'm not sure if they'll always be matched up on each other. Um, there's probably going to be a little cross matches, right? I think probably Hepburn at times will be on Lance Jones as well and vice versa. Uh, but Hepburn has to win the battle of the point guards. He has to be better than Braden Smith. And he can do it. In the big moment at home, he has to do better than he's done recently. For the last five games, less than six points. Six points or less for Hepburn. That's not enough. I'm going to give you one more key to the game. And again, I could list every player on here, essentially, because it is all hands on deck for this one. Purdue is really friggin' good. Okay? Make no mistake about it. But they're not unbeatable. Wisconsin can win this game. I think we need a reverse. Uh, we need that that early season form from John Blackwell. And it, we... It's been a minute, right, since we've seen Blackwell play the way we saw him play earlier in the year. Um, you go look at Blackwell in his last three games, he scored 10 combined points. Uh, he needs to be more active defensively. He's the type of guy who can come out there and and play that trio uh, of Penn State perimeter play, or Purdue permit, or Boilermaker perimeter players, right? He can he can help on the glass. An area where Zach Eady's so good offensively, John Blackwell John Blackwell's one of your best defensive rebounders on this team by a percentage standpoint. He he can help in that facet. He can help negate some of what Edie can do on the boards. But he needs to be out there and he needs to be more aggressive. We've seen him kind of hit a bit of that freshman wall. This would be a great game for him to come out and get back into that eight, nine point range that he was consistently in early in the year. All right, let's let's take some comments here, see where you guys think. Um Ryan Bolt said Crow and Winter need to just contain Edie and draw him away from the bucket and knock in a few threes. Yeah, that's it. Like, they're not going to outplay them, Ryan. And I agree with you. They just need to – they can't let him completely dominate, and they have to hang in there, right? It's like Rocky. You got – you get – and I guess that makes Edie, you know, like, um, name your name your Rocky. I don't know if he's um, – I don't know which which Rocky opponent he would be best. Is he Drago? I don't know. But, like, you're going to get pummeled a little bit. Can you hang in there and get out of the corner and punch back once in a while? Um, I think they can. I really do. And if you can not lose that battle in a landslide, if you can survive in the post, then I think you can win some of the perimeter battles. And that to me is the key to winning this game. Like the, the, a lot of people want to just double ED. I almost, and listen, you can't do the same thing the entire game. Purdue's too good, right? You have to mix it up a little bit. I would almost let ED see if he can beat you by himself and not let those perimeter shooters go off, right? Some of those double teams, Purdue feasts off the ability to hit open threes coming off those doubles, off those scramble situations. I'm almost just going to say, and this is where it goes back to crawl surviving, but I'm almost going to say, we're not going to help you every single time because we don't want these perimeter shooters to get going. And I don't think you're going to beat us hitting contested post shots the entire game, right? That's kind of it, – it, it's not a great solution, right? There's not a lot of great solutions when you're playing a great team that has multiple options and multiple vectors to beat you. But that's kind of what I would like. I think if you really start doubling hard and consistently doing it, you really open yourself up. And maybe they just have a cold day, right? Teams go cold, sometimes in the cold center, sometimes on the road you just don't shoot well. Certainly if they do that and you're doubling Edie, you're probably going to win. Not just like you have a puncher's chance. If you're doubling Edie and they go cold, you're probably going to win the game. And that could happen. But they have a lot of good shooters. I'm, I don't know if I'm trusting that to happen. T-Temp says we need Cole Center loud and proud, not a senior citizen day outing on Wisconsin. Let's go, T-Temp. Yeah, it's got to be buzzing. Man, you have – like that's the key with Nebraska, right? That crowd is incredible, and they're incredible consistently. You don't – you this this has to be a crazy good crowd. That environment's got to be there. you got to pick up the, the, the defense. you got to help them uh, play with energy and emotion and enthusiasm. Um, and I know it's easy for me to say, I'm, I live in Connecticut, I won't be there, but trust me, if I was there, I'd be losing my mind, right? So lose your mind, be excited. This is an enormous game. Like you win this game, you're kind of back in the driver's seat for the Big Ten. At least you put yourself in the pole position, right? For the Big Ten regular season title. This is in a game of enormous proportions for this, this regular season run. And you got them at home. What more could you ask for? The number two team coming in, in the country, coming into the Cole Center. What Playing the number six team in the country. I know you're coming off that Nebraska game, but there's a scenario where that helps that almost helps add a, a, an element of intensity of um, 
desperation to this game for the Badgers because you you have no more you you've used up all your slack right that that was kind of your cushion and you should never look at it like oh we have a cushion it doesn't matter but you kind of use it up now you need it and I can't wait to see how this team comes up they listen make no mistake they know they gave that Nebraska game away and they know the opportunity that lies in front of them they're going to come out they if they don't come out with crazy emotion if they don't come out playing a thousand miles an hour then I would question this team's leadership but I think they are going to and maybe that won't be enough, but I think they will. Mitch James says, if we if our bigs hit threes and draw Edie away from the boards, yeah, I think that's a big key to the game if they can do that. Crowell can definitely do that. you got to be aggressive. This is a game, too, where you want Crowell being aggressive offensively because then it forces Edie into playing harder defensively and having to use up energy. Um, I'll give Edie cre- credit on this. He plays 30.2 minutes per game, and he does it with a pretty good motor. Unlike a lot of bigs that start lumbering, he's pretty good. Like, he's worked on his conditioning to some degree. Um, Mitch says, need to give Connor minutes if he hits shots. Yes. Yes. Taylor McGinnis, if we hit a scoring drop, we need Connor to come in. Yes. <laughs> Listen, um, if you heard our Nebraska reaction show, you all know I agree with that. Badger Bournemouth, uh going to need winter play a few minutes for sure. Yeah. And he's going to have to battle. And he's going to have to survive. But I don't want to hear people talk about if if – he gets dominated a little bit in this game, how he they're disappointed in him. This is a bad matchup for him. It's, physically, this is where we needed to get somebody in the transfer portal who's a little more physically developed to be able to step in. Now, Winter could come in and pop a few threes. Absolutely. His his energy's got to be really high. Um, but, yeah, I, Winter's going to be needed for sure. Tyler McGinnis, uh, Taylor McGinnis says, Zach E's overrated, won't be in the league. Let's send him out this year. Realize he's only second best on Wisconsin. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, listen, he's overrated if you're looking at him from an NBA standpoint. Um, unfortunately, this is not an NBA game, right? And in that sense, he is not overrated. He is very much a problem uh, in, in the college sense. You know, and he's had a great year. Um, I think he's at, what, 23, 23 and 13 this year? 23 and 12, something like that. He's a handful. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Mitch James, Thor needs to hit his pull-up Jays and not dive into blocks for Edie. Yeah, you know, I wonder if this is a situation where Stork could get him in foul trouble too, though. Um, but yeah, it, I, if if it's there, Stork is a such a good, clean pull up, Jay. Uh, let me talk about Stork for a second, because uh, I feel like, and I could be on an island on this. I saw so much criticism of, of Stork after the Nebraska game, in a sense, you know, with the second half. Um, a lot of people, I had several people text me; they were frustrated with it. I had several people complain about his shot selection. He scored 28 and he was 11 of 22. That's 50% from the field. I'm no math major, but that's half. That's hitting half your shots. Um, I would suggest if all I would say is I don't think you're going to find many Big Ten players this year that have scored 28 points on 22 shots on the road in a Big Ten game. It's That's really good. Uh, now, was the second half as good as the first? No, but it all matters. It all counts. It's like if a guy scored 28 points and z- in the first half and zero in the second half, it's still 28 points. Like it doesn't, I don't think it matters as much as people think where, where those points come from and when should he have played better in the second half? Probably. But he was also probably tired from, from carrying the team quite frankly, offensively for most of that game. He scored 28 points on 50% shooting. Uh, and I saw people be really critical of it. I, I don't know. I think the narrative on store is getting a little too hard. He's going to take a couple bad shots. Most most sophomore perimeter players in college basketball do. Like th- that's just that's just basketball, man. Um, he also scored twenty eight on on twenty two shots on, on twenty. I, like that's that's really really good. And I don't want him to be less aggressive. I, I again, I think this narrative that I'm pushing back on and that's been running around my head is this idea that we want him to be less 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 aggressive. I'm like no. No, I, I, if anything, I almost want you to be more aggressive. If you're if you're hitting 50% of your shots, bro, go put some more up. Because what's going to start happening is what, what's going to start happening is like he's going to just continue to put more and more pressure on a defense. And then that's going to open things up more for his other guys. I don't know. I, I'm just not that frustrated by it. I thought he had it, we we probably weren't in that game without him. Um so yeah, I hope he comes out and he's aggressive again. And there's a part of me, Mitch is correct, that he needs to hit his open shots out of there. But there's a part of me that kind of wants him to take it right into Edie and try to yam on him and see if he can get a foul or two on Edie. Or at least send a message, right? Come down the lane, 
rise up on him and say, like, this is Madison. We're not scared. I know that sounds a little cheesy, but there is something about sending a message. Imagine, imagine the scenario where he yams on Edie. Imagine the crowd where he comes down the paint and he puts one in over Edie and gets a dunk and a foul. Likely, probably not, but that's also a tone setter. I mean, there's there's a scenario even when you get blocked that you do that, you set a tone to some degree. So I don't know, man. Um, if you I get the complaint occasionally that he takes some bad shots. Everybody takes bad shots in basketball. Um, let's see. John Berger says store is also 46% from three. Ryan Bolt said no complaints. Mitch says, I'm not criticizing, but he doesn't finish strong over bigs. That's what, yeah, that's fair. Like, I'm not, this is not me being critical of your comment, Mitch. I agree with you. Like, I want him taking that pull shot if it's there. And that is a fair point that he has struggled finishing at the rim. Um, that is a fair point. Ryan Bolt says, no complaints about Storr offensively. It's his defense that needs work. Fair. John Berger says, if Storr wastes all of his energy playing lockdown defense, he won't score like we need him to. Storr is the entire team right now. I think there's 75% truth there. If I'm just being honest, he's not the entire team. Uh, you know, this is a team that has multiple guys that can score. Klesman certainly has had huge moments recently. Like, so I think he would argue that store isn't the entire team, but listen, Hepper needs to step up for sure. Um, I think Blackwell has been in a bit of a slump wall's been a little hit or miss, uh, but yeah, there is something to the fact that if a guy's going to score 28 and expend a ton of energy on offense, it is tough to expect that on defense. However, that's what the great players do. Like, listen, wherever you are on the Johnny Davis needle, Johnny Davis brought it offensively and defensively every night. Like, that's what great players do. If you want to be a great player, you have to be great on both ends. Unless you are singularly unique on one of those ends. But Storr's not that. There's very few players who are so good, either offensively or defensively, that they don't need that other side of the ball um, to really become a star. So, yeah, like Storr could play better defense. I, I'm not going to let him off the hook there just because he's scoring really well. <laughs> Gene said halftime they quit. Thought, I do think they thought they won the game, Gene. I'm not going to accuse somebody of quitting, but, yeah, I do agree with you there. I think they thought they won the game, and that was kind of it. All right, we're going to wrap it there. I want your predictions. I want your thoughts. Again, this is an incredibly hard game. I'm not going to frame it in any other way. Purdue is an excellent, excellent, superb basketball team. I think the pieces around ED are better than other people give them credit for. I would, I would concentrate defensively on making ED just – really consistently beat me. And I think it's hard for a post player to do that over the course of a 40 minute game. I think there'll be spurts where he'll score like eight points in a row, but it's, I'm telling you, that's tough to do consistently. I wouldn't let their three point shooters get going. And that, that doesn't mean I would never double. Like you still have to throw changeups. You can't, you can't just never change it up, but I'm curious how they're going to play it. I, I think guard will probably double more than I would. I would and guard smarter at basketball than I am. So no complaints there. But I am very interested in this. Again, my, my players of the game, my key players, if we're going to win, you need an enormous effort from Crowell. You need, I think you need Hepburn to win the point guard battle. He needs to be better than Smith. He can do it. Uh, he needs to do it in this game. And then I think Black will come off the bench, has to get back to that early season form, be a little more aggressive, get into the paint, help on the glass. Um, my prediction is a Purdue win. I think, they're, I think they're just better top to bottom. I think they're deeper. I think I'm going to say, though, it's going to be close. Uh, I'm going to say like 68, 68 to 64 Purdue. Um, maybe maybe a little higher score than that, but I think about a three, four point win Purdue win is where I'm going. Ryan Bolt has 72, 69 Badgers. Um, yeah, I'm going to go like 68, 64 Purdue. Badger Bournemouth, that's what my prediction is. But I'll, I'll I'll probably have money on Wisconsin. So like I, like I bet with my heart, it is what it is. Y'all know the deal there. Um, on Wisconsin. Well, we know we'll talk about it afterwards. Yeah, absolutely enormous game against the Boilermakers. Let's bring the noise. Let's get the dub. Let's go.